In this video, let's establish the equation of an ellipse with its major axis oriented vertically. Now the standard form of the ellipse is given by x squared on a squared plus y squared on b squared equals 1. And in this equation, the constants a and b represent the lengths of the semi-major and semi-minor axis respectively. So this is the equation of an ellipse that has its major axis oriented horizontally. And one way to remember this is that A, the semi-major axis, sits below X and X is the horizontal coordinate. So in order to orient the same ellipse vertically, all we need to do is to swap these constants. So the equation of a vertically oriented ellipse is given by X squared on B squared plus Y squared on A squared is equal to 1 where b squared is less than a squared. So in this equation, the semi-major axis sits below y, which is the vertical coordinate. Both these equations are for ellipses centered about the origin. And the relationship between b and a also remains common between them. So b squared can be expressed as a squared outside of 1 minus e squared, where e is the eccentricity. All the other features also remain the same, except for their coordinates have been switched around. So here is a table that summarizes the difference in the features between a horizontally orientated and a vertically oriented ellipse. Now let's do an example. Okay, so let's sketch the ellipse of x squared on 49 plus y squared on 64 equals 1. The denominators of both terms can be expressed as square numbers. So we've got x squared on 49, which we can write as x squared on 7 squared plus y squared on 8 squared is equal to 1. So with the y having the bigger denominator, we've got a semi-major axis of 8 so from the origin if we go up 8 units we also go down 8 units and this forms the axis of the ellipse the semi-minor axis has a length of 7 so again from the origin we go across to the right by 7 units and across to the left by 7 units this forms the minor axis and at the end of these semi-major axes, we've got the vertices A and A prime, B and B prime. And now we can roughly sketch the ellipse passing through all of these points. Now let's work out all the other features, starting with the focal points. The focal points are located at A by E away from the center point. And this result we can calculate from the square root of a squared minus b squared and this is simply from rearranging the formula b squared equals a squared outside of 1 minus e squared so we have the square root of 64 minus 49 which equals the square root of 15 and this is approximately equal to 3.9 so we have the focal point along the semi-major axis at 3.9 away from the center so 1 to 3.9 so here is the focal point F, and similarly, 1, 2, 3.9 below the center. So here is the focal point F prime. And now the directrices. And these are located at a distance A over E above and below the center point. And A over E is given by A squared divided by the square root of A squared minus B squared. So this means we have 64 over the square root of 15 and this is approximately equal to 16.5 and unfortunately this value won't fit on our graph if I just represent the directrix as a dashed line we can say that this is at y is equal to positive 16.5 and the opposite directrix is given by y equals negative 
16.5. So this is the directrix D and this is the directrix D prime. Let's do a final example that is not centered at the origin. Alright, so sketch the curve x minus 1 all squared on 4 plus y plus 2 all squared on 16 equals 1. Again, the first thing to do is to write the denominators in terms of squared numbers. So we have x minus 1 all squared on 2 squared plus y plus 2 all squared on 4 squared equals 1. And by now we should know that these numbers offset the center of the ellipse from the origin. And this ellipse is offset by positive 1 in the x direction and negative 2 in the y direction. So it has a center point at 1, negative 2. The ellipse has a semi-major axis of 4. So from the center the semi-major axis reaches 4 units up and 4 units down. The semi-minor axis reaches 2 units to the right and two units to the left. So again let me mark the vertices as A and A prime and B and B prime. Now that I have these I can draw an ellipse through all of these points. Now the vertical points are again at a distance A times E away from the center and we know that's given by the square root of A squared minus B squared which is equal to the square root of 16 minus 4, which equals the square root of 12, which is approximately equal to 3.5. So on the major axis, at a distance 1, 2, 3 and a half above the center, we have a focus F. And similarly, 1, 2, 3 and a half units below the center, we have the focal point F prime. And for the directrices, these are again at a distance a over E, which is equal to A squared divided by the square root of A squared minus B squared, which is equal to 16 divided by root 12, and that's approximately equal to 4.6. So at roughly 4.6 units above the center point, we have the directrix Y is equal to 4.6, and similarly at 4.6 units below, the center point we have the directrix y is equal to negative 4.6. And sorry, to be more precise, we should have minus 2 here. y is equal to 4.6 minus 2 and negative 4.6 minus 2 due to being shifted two units below 0 in the y direction. All right, so that completes the series on ellipses. If you found this video useful, please give me a like and please share this with your friends. And please subscribe to my channel for more free videos that may help you with your homework or assignments. Best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.